Hey, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, talk about some of the fun Nothing things else. that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else that we just happen to find interesting. I am Vin Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and over there is Pedro Mateus, and everyone watching us live on Twitch. Hi. How's it going? So nothing at all has happened mm-hmm. since last week. Nothing. Not a thing. Mm-mm. The internet isn't talking about <laughs> anything Tons right now. The <laughs> Linux, yeah. Linux ecosystem has not turned into a soap opera. Nope. Not a bit. <laughs> Speaking of soap operas, <laughs> Jill, you noticed yeah. something. Yes. You've been counting. So, yes, I have. So, OMG, it is our 300th episode of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. Woohoo! Are you saying this? Congratulations. Is Sparta! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I can't believe I've been here since episode 111 in um, April of 2018. Can you believe that? Wow. Because well, no, of I, I our always, wonderful uh, patrons. Pedro will <laughs> pop up every now and then. He's like, yes, we've been doing this for like nine years and something like And I, I'm the one making these. And like, I don't know. I guess <laughs> if you say so, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. I have no it's idea. It's usually the numbers that in my head go, wait a second, you can divide that by nine. Oh, it's been that long. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, ho, ho, ho. Merry 300, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Pedro, you, you... Okay, first of all, what are you doing playing around with FireWire audio devices in 2021, bro? I, I'm addicted to this particular Apugi duet. Uh, it, it, it sounds Typical very Linux nice. user. <laughs> Using <laughs> Mac devices. <laughs> <laughs> that weren't even supposed to work, but they do, and they sound really nice. But uh, yes, that that has been my uh, sound card interfacey type of situation for a few months now. And um, yesterday, uh, before the stream, I was basically fighting my system to figure out why it wasn't working. Why isn't uh, even mm-hmm. Pulse Audio loading at all? Or why isn't Alsa even seeing the um, the Apugi? Have you not read it turns Twitter? Out Audio does not work on Linux, man. Yes, I I was basically getting the (laughs) default experience, but uh, I like to think myself, you know, better than that. (laughs) But yeah, no, as it turns out, I had the hardware enablement uh, stack kernel 513. That was the latest one that's available for 2004, which I'm running KDE Neon, which is based on 2004. So... That was the kernel I was running, and that was the thing that was causing the issues. So um, for the stream, I actually used the Apugi 1, because that's just USB, and that worked just fine. Uh, the FireWire device, I didn't get it working until I basically booted back into 5.11, and it immediately came up. It's like, oh, okay. So sudo app remove star 5.13 star. Uh-huh. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it on the running system? I had already rebooted to a previous. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will straight up uninstall the running kernel and reboot. I don't think Ubuntu lets you do that. <laughs> uh, I think if you try to install the current running one, it will automatically yeah, reinstall like the yeah. unsigned version of that kernel. Yeah, see, I, I live over in the real world with Debian. yes don't have that problem like go yolo and it it is a very reliable yolo so i don't feel and i do this when i'm testing out compiling um kernel 515 rc release gannets and testing out some of the uh stuff also for firewire and other things uh but i've never had a problem with it uh i don't suggest doing it at home and if it blows up i will just laugh at you but hey (laughs) That line yeah, is no, good. stay away from 513 <laughs> if you have FireWire anything, at least on Ubuntu. Maybe other distros do something different, but here mm. is borked. That line is no, good. Pedro. <laughs> I, all right, you guys get it out of your system. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get started. No. We got a like, third salvo coming in. <laughs> Come on, let's make it awkward. Oh, at least he's running art. Is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that line is good, the squeaky one, not this one. He finally released the video that a lot of people have been waiting for. I watched it yesterday, (laughs) and um, that's not entirely true. I I flipped through it yesterday. (laughs) I wasn't terribly interested. (laughs) Yeah. But you kind of got to watch it for research 
just so we can talk about it on the show. And um, mm-hmm. the one thing I saw, like jumping around through the video, um, I kept talking about average users. Like oh, an average gamer or an average computer user wouldn't <laughs> use a command line or wouldn't. And the only time, well, the only thing I was thinking during that was, you know, I've never met an average person who runs Linux. And I'm not patting you on the head. I'm not giving you a false praise when I say that because. I think we've all, you know, met somebody like you think about it like this. Average people who install Linux, they never stick around. They just don't. And what I'm saying there, you know, I'm not saying that uh, that we're above average. No, I'm not saying we're above average. Quite the opposite. What, I, what I'm saying is like, we're kind of the misfits. We're, we're the people who get bored with something like iOS. Yeah. Oh, misfits. Okay, that we is like a better tinker. term than the one I had in my head. <laughs> the tinkers, like the people tinker. who want to play around. You're looking Curious. at Windows and like, this is boring. There's got to be more stuff to yeah. do. There's got to be more to learn. I want to, I want to go mm-hmm. deeper, you know? And here we are. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have people who are like, I think a more common term would be like Linux curious. You know, somebody who's mm-hmm. like, ah, maybe I want to play around with Linux. Like, ah, then they're going to run in with something. We, you see these people, you get them in your life. Somebody who just wrecks their desktop every other week. And they're like, oh, nope, nuke it from orbit. And let's start over. I'm like, are you going to learn anything from that? Nuke it from orbit, I said, <laughs> and reinstall. <laughs> That's how I fix things. Hi, Windows. You know, I, I learned it from watching you. And, um... <laughs> That's quite unfortunate, but you know, that that's pretty decent. And yeah, I will always say we are the misfits. We're the curious ones. We are the tinkerers. And, um, yes, <laughs> that's that. I don't say that from a place of ego, elitism or uh, toxicity. I say that from 30 years of personal experience, you know, I, on this side, I just want to just say that and keep that, keep that yeah. mindset when you're watching an entertainment technology channel and they're talking about <laughs> yes. average users like <laughs> yeah that's, that's, what a, stay average my friends yeah lgc cares <laughs> windows needs users mac needs users it's okay mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and we are the linux nerds we're, we're not we're, i don't want to go stepping on average toes man <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're the bullheaded um, Pedro people who Mateus, refuse to you, look facts in the face. Have you not? And I, keep I, I, I can't <laughs> live with this, Pedro. I can't have someone being averagely upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we I did manage to uh, irk quite a large segment of the Linux population with the Saturday Born cast. <laughs> well, that, this is easy. I mean, this type, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> We're just going to watch and see how this plays out because, hey, we got opinions and we got thoughts on it. And no, don't let anybody say you can't criticize anything. I mean, this is a commercial venture that Linus is doing. So, yes, it's wide open to criticism. (laughs) And, um, yeah. He's making money off it. He deserves the criticism. (laughs) The whole idea that this series was like, oh, we just sporadically decided to do this on a show out of a chin. No. Don't 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 buy that. Then, if you believe that, you believe reality TV is not scripted. So mm, that's all I'll say about that. Hey, another <laughs> thing I've been playing around with is uh, last week I got the Raspberry Pi Zero Two W. Picked that up. Nice. And I finally decided to start playing around with it. This is uh, my little Proto Pi. That is the Pi Zero W Two, powering my Stream Deck. I got that set up and it's wirelessly, you know, I didn't get the rest of it in the picture, but um, communicating with this box here, which is a uh, my little thread ripping system that is used for streaming over the Wi-Fi, like self-contained, because I'm prototyping. I got, I got an idea, I got plans, but I wanted to see if I could get my uh, BitFocus companion web server and all that set up with Wi-Fis and that little quad core had enough juice to do it. And it looks, uh, it's positive. Some things are going to have to be done. For reliability and it not melting, but eh, there's promise there. Stay tuned. It might also involve Very me having nice. to break down and upgrade uh, from my original maker bot. It's made out of wood, <laughs> but it turns out that apparently when I wasn't paying attention for the last decade, uh, you can get like for 200 bucks, you can get a pretty decent little 3D open source printer these days. I'm like, all right, maybe I'll go pick one of those up and burn some filament. All right, let's get in. Mm-hmm. To the actual news, though, because Pop goes yeah. the DM this week. 
This is very exciting news. So System76 is working on its own desktop manager. And it is not GNOME shell based, but will be primarily based on the new code base of hotness, Rust. <laughs> yes, this is awesome. So this is, you know, really wonderful news. And honestly, something I've been speculating for quite some time. You know, they've been making GNOME their own with their Cosmic Desktop, which takes the core GNOME user interface and customizes it with extensions to better be meet the needs of, of their target audience of creators, developers, and nerds like us. So at some point, you know, I knew that the changes they wanted to make with the GNOME Desktop were not going to be enough, especially since they were relying on GNOME extensions to do so. And as we here on LWW have talked about many times, having to use extensions to improve your desktop is really not optimal. What? No, I'm and on XFC. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No plugins. So, Imagine using XFC with no plugins. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, and, you know, you know, and I think building their new desktop in Rust is Honestly, a really great sh choice, especially since the future of the Linux kernel will have some rusty elements. So that's definitely a thing. And this is a really awesome change for System76. It's going to be very I'm positive. I'm thinking about it and I'm looking at it. My first thought, like a lot of you at home, you're sitting there going, y'all remember Mirror? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remember Unity? <laughs> this has all happened before and it will all happen again. Um yeah, Unity. That was a thing, man. You know what? I was never really a fan of Unity, but I really wanted it to succeed. I did on this show, mm -hmm. even when it was still being on life support. I'm like, this needs to happen. We need this. Why? Because I, I probably think about it a little bit differently than a lot of you at home. I really do. Because I've, I've been trying to teach people how to do the Linux thing for well over a decade. And um, it's always from the command line. And that is a very common complaint. We were talking about that in the pre-show. If you missed out your patron, go back and listen to it. And having like a, like the one target desktop has always been kind of a dream. You know, the desktop hardware, it, doing that the for System76, right. Having like, mm -hmm. yo, we'll start here and you can work backwards from there. Having that, not only is that going to simplify the support for System76, I mean, to some degree, because the average person's not going to change their desktop. They're going to get in like, okay, I'll live with this. This is my life now. And um, being able to just troubleshoot. But um, it would also give me a target to make guides. It would be very easy to go boom, boom, boom. I mean, like right now, people would argue, hey, why don't you just do a GNOME? And I was like, that would require me running GNOME. No, I'll just stick with a command line because it's universal all the way across. But do we need another desktop manager? Fragmentation, Pedro. I can't stand it. Because I don't care because no. I can still run whatever I want. <laughs> it's not fragmentation. It's experimentation. There is a difference. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the, whole yeah, yeah. Behind, yeah. <laughs> the whole argument behind the whole argument behind fragmentation. Yes, there is the, oh, uh, there's many things that do one thing. Therefore, it's fragmented. I mean, yes, if you just want to look at the facts, yes. Although uh, there are many things, and if one of them is called GNOME and the other one's called KDE and the other one's called XFCE, these are all very, very different. Yes, they all do the same thing. They all give you a desktop to work for, but they are very, very different. It's not fragmentation, it's choice. You don't like choice? Windows works. Wait, is Windows still too open for you? Mac OS. There. <laughs> I don't know what type of like technical wizard you are. I use Chrome OS. <laughs> Chrome OS, even better. Yeah. <laughs> Linux based and no choice whatsoever. That's it. That's what you get. No, but, but I do want to hit you up. We'll have this conversation real quick, Pedro, because again, from my perspective, like, yo, I want to be able to help people out getting things, especially multimedia production under Linux and I say, okay, this is how you do that. And they're like, well, I, it doesn't work this way under KDE. My response is, not my problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, not a, that's not a great response. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. But it is a valid response because if you're providing someone with help, from, you can only do it from your perspective. If that someone is insisting on doing something using a tool that you don't necessarily like. Okay, here's another problem I have, though. Like, we could get that you... Cause, 
Linus, not this one, the squeaky one, <laughs> Linus <laughs> yeah, um, said that, you know, if, if it's an average user, they can't use the command line, especially average gamers, <laughs> completely out of the option. They're not, they don't have the, the correct amount of folds of gray matter to use command lines. I I'd say Linus has a very poor uh, understanding of the average user or maybe a little too good of an understanding of the average user by what he displayed on screen. Well, no, but- hang on. <laughs> maybe he's talking about his average viewer. Yeah. Okay, if it is his but- view uh, and his gotcha. actual legitimate view, <laughs> <laughs> and he's not just doing that for the clicks. Uh, but, uh, like ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has lots of Linux users in, in, in his, uh, you know, watching his streams. So. And that's yeah, the thing. but we're if he genuinely was control, doing Jill. this, we're like, oh, yeah. what, what what nonsense am I going to be dealing with as a result of this? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't say yeah, that if he lightly. genuinely wanted that. No. <laughs> he well, could have asked Anthony because Anthony knows Linux, or he could have asked Wendell because you know collaboration between YouTubers. Wendell is also pretty big on Linux. Uh, yeah. it, they could have even, I don't know, maybe watched a certain podcast uh, that has mm-hmm. Linux Absolutely. and gaming in the name. No. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> going back to System76, which is relevant because that's the first distro that Linus tried. Not that one. The, <laughs> the new uh, desktop environment. I like it. Well, I don't know if I like it, but I am certainly curious because... It's a desktop environment built in Rust. I I am genuinely curious. We'll see whether or not I actually like it after I give it a, a shot. Hey, but I, I mean, I at least it's Rust. We'll have to curious. guarantee that it'll be slower. <laughs> yes. Aww. I mean, that's kind of unavoidable. At least more latent. <laughs> <laughs> well, there already are some other Rust desktops out there that people have been experimenting with. <laughs> and they work pretty well. <laughs> Okay, but are we going to get like a WM flux box, open box style of situation like the current ones that exist? Or are we going <laughs> yeah. to get something to, I don't know, even maybe a rival XFC or More LXD? Heavyweight, some, yeah. some of the lighter weight <laughs> ones, absolutely. Or maybe go full on GNOME or KDE and actually <laughs> encompass the entire framework. Yeah. That I'm curious. That well, I have to be cool. I think we might Very be true, an Pedro. To that. Um, yeah, best of luck to him. It'll be interesting to see what happens. This is still very, very early days, too. This is just like, mm-hmm. yes. hey. Oh, this, yeah. this, this was literally enough We're thinking about comment on about Reddit. It, yeah. <laughs> That's one <laughs> speculation <Right>. about. <laughs> now, that is not the only bit of System76 uh, we have this week, because this had to pop up last night. They're like, you know what? It's been a couple of weeks since internet drama showed up. <laughs> and this one has been ongoing for a while. Yes, the slap fight between GNOME and Sim- uh, System76 continues. On this latest iteration, uh, we have, uh, what's his name, Chris Davis, uh, actually typing out a very lengthy article uh, describing in what way System76 was a big meanie and they want to do things their own way and not the way that no, I do GNOME want to go ahead and throw in him. if you're new to the show. Pedro's anti-gnome as hard as you can get. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, am, I very much am. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as someone who is very anti-gnome, reading this article, it had a very whiny overtone to it. Uh, and, you know, people in glass houses, I shouldn't be the one necessarily to be talking about whining, but, you know, uh, the <laughs> uh, it's the complaint here is so ironic that I'm... I'm almost sure that Chris is very aware of it because it's Gnome complaining that someone else is doing things the way that they want to do when Gnome are the prime example that I keep going back to for a project in the Linux space that keeps doing things the way that they want to do without listening to anyone. Remember what happened when you moved from Gnome 2 to Gnome 3? Remember what happened when you moved you the standard... <laughs> When you move the standard from how it was done in GNOME 3 to GNOME 4 or 40 or whatever you call it nowadays, do you remember that? For the the sake of newsworthiness, (laughs) what are some of the complaints being leveraged, Pedro? 
<laughs> the complaints are uh, this all, I think it kicked off with the uh, LVFS, the way that uh, System76 at first didn't want to use LVFS because they were concerned about the some of the information that was being collected. And uh, then they eventually just started using LVFS and FWPD. The same thing. And the complaint there was that uh, during that time that they didn't want to use it, they were posting mean things on social media and spreading misinformation. In fact, misinformation is a word that I didn't actually look it up, but it appears at least five or six times in this particular article. So, and it's always leveraged at uh, System76. Come on, my favorite <laughs> slap fight is over GK. I'm just joking. I don't really care about that. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to say this. Um, you know, w- when you do s- sit back and suck out all the unneeded drama from the situation, you basically get two projects that want to do things their own way. You know, hashtag my way is best way. We've all been there, you know, myself included, because I'd rather enjoy doing things my way but that also forces me to think you know it'd be a wee bit silly of me to chastise others and other projects that are doing the same thing that we all naturally do in the first place i mean this is just reality of it now <laughs> irony that's the thing man you know sometimes it's not pretty but what we're seeing right now is open source working as intended it is because yeah. you get that yeah. option you know what because you absolutely can go make your own lunar lander you can with you know working on the existing infrastructure what's already there like hey you know what we're not going to see eye to eye on this so let's go do our own thing and that's good that's a good that's a bonus and it, and it is very human of us to like hey, let's pick a team but like we are a tribal bunch yeah. always have been yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah, it, it, I, I guess that that's just the way average non-XFC users think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, over here in the KDE Master Race right. land, that uh. sounds wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet you have to open more terminals. I oh, Wait a second, I need to open the terminal to make sure that K-Win hasn't sprung another memory leak. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That needs fixing. <laughs> Oh, Mine's so that's advanced why I gotta stick with window maker. I'm sorry. Wayland. I have Wayland <laughs> no. anti Wayland defense measures built in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Jill, any opinions on this one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well I think uh, yeah, Cheese Bacon said it correct, you know, in chat that, you know, we're we're human and uh, you know, ha- ha- having Linux drama is you know, part of it, <laughs> but I really do feel that, that, you know, this is, uh, the beauty of open source is, you know, system 76 is taking the GNOME desktop and making it suit their needs and making it better for their needs. And that's mm-hmm. the beauty of open source. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, <laughs> Going back to the oil and that Van dropped there, but we hadn't given Jill the chance to <laughs> say anything just yet. So, yeah, it's here. It's actually here. Uh, version 21.1.3 is available. It's no longer uh, in release candidate um, availability. It is actually released. There were no changes since the last release candidate. It was, yeah, it, it's here. You can get your, if you have an NVIDIA card and you're running the 495 drivers, you can go and launch x Wayland things and go, yeah, that that works. Now I'm going to save that, everybody a lot of trouble yeah. if you get the latest <laughs> NVIDIA drivers and you get the latest version of x Wayland, which you probably don't. Yeah. No, because what <laughs> we're trying to communicate, if you want to, and if you're capable, go ahead and grab it. There's nothing standing mm-hmm. in the way other than getting the latest updated packages to go play with Wayland on NVIDIA. All the bits are there, but you got to be brave if you want to play that home game. I'm personally, I'm very happy. I'm content. I opened Sway, opened a terminal terminal inside of that. And I'm like, man, that was an awesome experience. Let's get back to the sex thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, or you wait for your distro package maintainers to uh, eventually get around to it, which is what most people are going to do. And mm. that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the options there. Um, probably the easiest way, it'll probably get rolled back into, because um, you're going to be playing with Pipewire too, if you're going to be playing with Wayland, I assume, unless mm-hmm. you're just 
hundred percent. You don't desktop. need to, but yeah. you should. Yeah. You really should. Pipewire is nice. Go get some <laughs> of the latest of that Fedora action uh, for an out of the box experience. I think yeah, it's probably the best absolutely. way to do it. Now, I've always wondered if there was this bizarro moon universe where XFC was based on QT instead of GCK. Oh, oh. well, you kind of have something, uh, a desktop that's similar to that, and it's called LXQT. So LXQT 1.0.0, the lightweight QT5 desktop manager, has been recently released with some very important changes and updates. And this is awesome that it is at the 1.0.0 release. And what's really cool is LXQT, um, this new version, depends on the QT 5.15 long-term support release, the LTS release, which was just released in uh, May of 2020. And there are so many wonderful updates and upgrades uh, to this version, including the LXQT panel is now even more customizable with the inclusion of a new plugin called Custom Command. And the file manager um, now has an option in the LXQT file dialog for showing hidden files. <laughs> I've actually been waiting for this functionality for a very long time in LXQT. What do you got to um, worry I was about? Always like missing hiding that. hidden files. Jill, just close your eyes, man. Come on. Just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, it's nice to have that, that upgrade to PC Man <laughs> FM QT. <laughs> but yes. I don't know. Pedro. I am half blind, so it's kind of true. <laughs> so. <laughs> when I think about LX QT, we got this 1.0 release and. Do, do you want to play with it? Because I, I've kind of had the same experience that you've had every time I've been uh, mm -hmm. curious. I'm popping. I'm like, ah, I'm one. Mm. Nah. I really like the idea behind it. I do. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, just a quick mention, big thank you to the Raiders that we currently have going on. We're recording this live. So welcome, everyone. Hi. The Who Raiders? Um... It, it, it showed up earlier. I don't remember who it was. Let me see if I can scroll right quick <laughs> and uh, do the thing. Where 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 is it? Uh, it well, was like um, <laughs> as Pedro is trying to find ra raiders, I can tell you a little bit more about yeah. LXQT one point zero point zero. Um, you can now also recursively customize folders in in the file manager. And what's also awesome is. Like other desktop environments, there is a new do not disturb mode for muting and unmuting desktop notifications. Something yes. we've all needed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jill. It was the primate gym. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. That was uh, kind of crazy. <laughs> but awesome. yes, the, my experience with LXQT has been very much, oh, that that's something really nice. I Like lightweight, tiny, QT based. Absolutely. Let's go. And something's broken. Uh, either the um, network manager just refuses to spawn or the like battery up because I like laptops, battery uh, power settings just straight up don't apply. They ignore them entirely, which forces you to then install, say, the XFCE power manager or do use any of the other ones that are available. But there's always something. There's always something that's so massively broken that I just go, you know what? I'm out. It's okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe the 1.0 will fix it because I haven't actually tried Possibly. it. So maybe. Well, let's talk about something <laughs> yeah. that is uh, not massively broken. It's quite an interesting experiment. And th this very much got my attention. Mm, this very did. cool. Because I'm a dangerous person to have in your house, unsupervised. And uh, this this next thing could absolutely be weaponized just a little bit. Pedro, you've heard of Silver Blue before, right? Yes, we even discussed it uh, tangentially last week. Joe, mm -hmm. what do you think of Silver Blue? I think it's amazing, yeah, amazing. to have a con yeah, yeah, to have a fedora with containers. It's pretty awesome. I think it would be Lots a neat thing <laughs> to transmogrify into Ubuntu, and now we have a way to do it. This is kind of fun. This is kind of brilliant because an Ubuntu desktop for Fedora. Silver blue is absolutely a thing. Now, 
first off, you're going to be dealing with the type of person who has the adventurous spirit to play with Silver Blue, which I do not, <laughs> most certainly do not. Uh, but <laughs> this is going to get you kind of set up with what you know what you would expect from a Ubuntu roll up. What is that gnome these days? Yes, Pager, you run Ubuntu, <laughs> so. <laughs> no, well, I run Kitty Neon, which is could, very clearly he's not running, running Gnome, as the name would imply. Yeah, but yeah, no. If this is you, uh, Blue is just trying to. Okay, so uh, the core for Silver Blue is a OS tree uh, immutable core, so you can't really change a lot of the background stuff. It's designed to be that way. It's something that you put on, like a system that you don't want the people um, that are going to be using that system to mess with the internals. That's fine. That's absolutely great. But maybe you like the idea of it a little bit and you kind of want to use something that you know for a fact you can't really mess around without going to great lengths. So maybe you just want to do that. And if you prefer the way that Ubuntu does it with the dock down the side and the panel at the top. And that that's about it. That's pretty much all it does. That <laughs> right now, anyway. <laughs> I think one of the big things about this is it's reversible. So it's kind of a guilt-free yes. way to mess with your coworkers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it, it, you it can makes just sense SSH and revert it done. <laughs> It, it makes sense for, for those that are comfortable with the, the panel on the left side, like you have an Ubuntu on GNOME. Um, it makes sense that they might like the skin, uh, especially mm-hmm. since they're using a, a very progressive uh, distro called Fedora. So it, it makes it feel more comfortable. Bloom on top of that. Then again, you got to... You... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about messing with the type of people that are running Silver Blue. Probably not a good idea in the first place. So just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, true. Yeah, it's I mean, if you're yeah. willingly <laughs> running it and you went out of your way to do it for yourself, yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, Probably. This, this is something I might, I, I would play around with this just to see how it worked. Like, huh. All right. Because again, I mean, you can revert it very easily. It's not a, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not a permanent thing. Now, this is not internet drama. This is just the internet. Uh, oh my God, pink. For a split <laughs> second, <Yes>. wasn't it? <laughs> It's uh, every now and then we get the one vulnerability on Linux that sends the internet into a flurry. I mean, okay, shell shock, pretty bad. Heartbleed, n- not great. Mm. But everything outside of those two, pretty much fear, uncertainty, and doubt all the way down. This one is Tipsy, the kernel module that allows you to create and manage um, basically a n- network cluster. Uh, yes. The Tipsy module is probably installed on your distro right now. It comes with most of them by default. But if you run ls mod pipe grep Tipsy, that's T I P C, it probably isn't loaded because you're not running a cluster from your desktop machine. So you're fine. And this was discovered and patched quickly enough that apparently nothing else came out of it. So, yeah the internet is basically running rampant if you're on Twitter or you're uh, anywhere that you have any kind of Linux news uh, being delivered to you, which uh, also the Google News feed on my phone. It's like, oh, the new remote code execution flaw in <laughs> Linux. It lets people destroy Quit your system. My Google News <laughs> yeah. feed's trying to sell me ham. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's CDNet for you. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> This, this is just panic about nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. But what if I'm... It was, yes, it was a bad flaw. It was a pretty bad flaw. And Absolutely, if you have yeah. a network cluster and you're using the Tipsy module to do it, you should have patched this already, like last week. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you're not, it it's okay. Fair it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's good news. Uh, I don't think anybody was attacked with it with the vulnerability, were they? Yeah, no, they said they didn't find it in the wild, okay. which was really great because it could have been very bad. <laughs> <laughs> this next bit is kind of puzzling because according to the internet, audio doesn't work on Linux, by the way. all well, this Linux. Um, but we got a new DAW. That's right. It's not the Fargate. 
It's a Stargate. Can't make this up. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. I downloaded it, played around with it. They're trying something different this time. You know, digital audio workstation. I have one. This window over here. This is a Harrison Mixbus 32C. That's powering all the live audio mixing that we're doing right now and audio processing. But this is along those lines. And this is a holistic audio production solution. I, I'm reading that off the copy. And um, <laughs> yeah, but it can run a Raspberry Pi 4 or 15-year-old laptop. It's all the engine plugin, completely written in C. And I, I, I put it up on the DOS server because I'm always curious. Um, we don't have a ton of options. We got Bitwig, we got Reaper, we got Adore, we got Mixbus, and uh, Traction. So I loaded it up. Like, mm, it did launch because I do kind of a weird thing. I use uh, SSH uh, with X11 forwarding in order to pull everything up. But yeah, everything ran, but there's not a lot to run. You know, I didn't see an option to set up the control surfaces I have down here, which I have too. Kind of need those for the live. And um, didn't see a way to like scan my VSTs, VST2, VST3, LV2 plugins. I had a couple of built-in plugins, some basic ones like compression, limiting, stuff like that. EQ, I believe, was in there. But it did do the one thing. And then here's one thing that Adore has right. I'm going to say over something like Reaper is uh, you... Reaper, mid, Bitvig, stuff like that. They have a matrix grid for connecting. Like, okay, I want this digital input to go to this digital output or this physical input to this. This is all well and fine when you're dealing with two, three channels. Once you're up to like 30 something, that becomes a nightmare to deal with. Uh, I know when I was uh, playing around with Reaper in the studio, I had to go get a ruler because <laughs> that grid mm -hmm. was like this. I was putting a rule and like <laughs> to line it up and like that one. Okay. Turn. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Cause we got a lot of stuff with an jack, but fun little project completely free. It's open source. Go play around with it. There'll be a link in the show notes after the fact. And uh, yeah, it's still the early, early days, but I mean, everybody's going to start somewhere. And Pedro, you thought it was a really slick website. You just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the website it, it gave me some KDE four vibes. Um, if you ever used that particular theme, if you, if you were looking at the video version while Ven was showing it, I can't remember. Was it called Sleek or something like that? Um, oh, or yeah. if you've been using Garuda Linux recently, that looks very similar, doesn't it? Yeah, looks like the fire theme. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good observation, <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> But yeah, I think it is cool, uh, Ven, that Stargate has a collaboration feature so you can work on music projects, you know, with other people virtually and not have to be in studio with them. So that that's something else that we need more on Linux. It's awesome. Good times. So that's the thing. Oh, man. Tuxedo's got a new thing out? Yeah. Just, the Tuxedo Nano thing. Pro Gen... <laughs> Uh, Generation 11 mini PC measuring just 4.6 inches by 4.3 inches by 1.9 inches has been released. And yes, this little baby computer you can play games on. And with a starting price of 640 euros, you get an AMD Ryzen 3 4300U 4, processor, 8 gigs of DDR4 3200 RAM, and 250 gigabyte M2 SATA 3 SSD. And what's awesome is that's the low end. And on the high end, you can get up to a Ryzen 7 4800U processor, 64 gigs of RAM, a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD, or 8 terabyte 2.5 SSD. Or even better, you can just buy the bare bones box with the APU and supply your own components, which is what I would do. <laughs> Yep. And um, it it ships with your choice of Ubuntu Linux or the Ubuntu based Tuxedo OS. <laughs> it's really cool. And a uh, major major kudos to Tuxedo because okay, the whole shoving horizon, <laughs> uh, especially the forty seven uh, the forty eight hundred U into a five by five by two teeny tiny little box like Nook sized effectively. That, that that's impressive. Uh, it, that's yeah. uh, that's a lot of cores and a lot of APU uh, going on in there. But that accolade goes to or accolade, I should say, uh, goes to AS Rock because they're the mm -hmm. ones who 
did this and the I was um, about author to say this might look a little familiar <laughs> Simil- <it's> similar the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the uh this article comes from uh lily pudding and um head writer uh brad liner I was like, yeah, that, that, that it is the same box. It just has the tuxedo badge on it and with tuxedo lyrics, which is, uh, at least at the time when they sent us the, uh, infinity book 13, uh, it was effectively, uh, X Ubuntu, uh, with some heavy, heavy customization and some heavy limitations on the power usage. That laptop, of all the ones that I was sent, was the only one that, if you were working off of battery, it capped out exactly at 15 watts. And it was all done in software. They did it all Mm. themselves. So they get full credit for taming the 4800U and all the other uh, Ryzen APUs that they're going to be offering in those teeny tiny little AMD Nooks style things. So They're all very interesting. Like I, (laughs) So cool. Even though I try to keep AMD where I can, um, I've always been interested by Nooks. It's a small form factor. No, yeah. admittedly, I'm against the desktops because I, I don't understand why people are into hardware torture. You know, it's, uh, let's see how much <laughs> hardware, we, see how small, let's see how hot we can make something so it'll die quicker. I've never understood that, but <laughs> I don't know, Pedro, you sell like me tablets. <laughs> I don't get how you say that, but you like tablets. Okay. Oh, I say that because I'm not trying to run a desktop on a tablet, Pedro. (laughs) But if you could, wouldn't you? No. I have a 43-inch monitor. No. (laughs) How how, how hard of a no can I get? So um, what I wouldn't like is something Nook-powered, small form factor to replace uh, three boxes down here. Just because of the floor space and all that, I'd like to just, you know, surgically, I mean, engineering, uh, duct tape them like under the desk or something and just have them hanging out like that. But these things are always wicked expensive. No matter who's doing it, what hardware is in them, I look at it, I go, with that, bit? oh, no, no, no. That, that's the same price as the, the new Mac mini thing. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, you are dealing with the Nook style of situation and you're going to be paying a lot for the bare bones unit. There's a market have though. I can, I try to imagine like there's gotta be a situation, right? Like if you're like hyper, super limited on space or you're worried about yes. noise or and, something mm-hmm. like that. Absolutely. These things have vase mounts on the bottom so that you can mount them to the back of a monitor and you Pedro. effectively have the matter. I can mount anything. <laughs> so you have like effectively uh, you can build yourself all in ones and if you're doing a mass deployment it's company money anyway so you don't care what it costs yeah good job on that okay (laughs) so we've uh decided that okay well we gotta get into slice pie but there it is there's everybody's favorite pie (laughs) pumpkin (laughs) was that made deliberately to a night it's like it (laughs) It looks like a, uh, like what a, are you talking like about? A, this a, is how I cut a pizza. Starburst or, yeah. <laughs> cut pizza. Was exactly. someone going for the cracked glass look? It's like, oh, it looks exactly like yeah. the crack that I have on my windshield. <laughs> Here's a pro tip, kids. This is how you get out of ever having to cut pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to do it once. Well, to their credit, pumpkin pie is hard to cut. <laughs> The only thing you cut <laughs> pumpkin pie with is a fork. A spatula. Your fingers. You have fingers. Actually, y'all have more <laughs> fingers than I do. Use them. <laughs> Nay. Get dirty. <laughs> so we're going to get to a little bit of a slice of pie, but something we were talking about last week. I picked up the uh, new Raspberry Pi Zero 2W thing. Go back to the beginning of the show. Some of the stuff I'm playing around with. But. I think we were just talking in the after show. I'm like, I wonder if I could put Windows 10 on it because Windows 10 has an ARM <laughs> build. <laughs> While I would never do that for any personal reasons, I was like, man, that'd be fun to stream, wouldn't it? <laughs> right? It, it would be fun to a point that it would just be, oh, come on, I'm only watching now because I want to see you do it so I can leave. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but look at it like this. You would be watching that stream now, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> like I would be fascinated. Like you know what, guys, we're gonna take a break. We'll leave it up, and we'll see what happens, and we'll come back. And uh, 
<laughs> so in order to make that happen, I had to do a little bit of research. I'm like, okay, I have no idea. I know that even Microsoft just says, hey, we got Windows 10 that'll run on a Pi. Allegedly? I don't know. Not really anymore. All the publicly facing links to that ARM image just kind of don't exist anymore. And if you want to like, get Windows 10 or Windows 11 up and running on a Pi, it's not a simple task. I was thinking, what would you think, right? Like, I bet you're going to give me an image that I'm just going to burn with an imager and pop it on the SD card and we're done. Uh-uh. No, sir. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. So there's Not this. anymore. There is this. <laughs> I had to go to War Flasher. And this is a, get this. Legal utility. <laughs> this is not an illegal use. <laughs> they, they claim it's 100% yeah. legal. So. 100%. Uh, <laughs> utility that runs RPI OS to flash another SD card. This is some Rube Goldberg mechanism to get Windows 10 mm -hmm. and 11 up and running on a button. This is like, hey, this is the one you kind of want to use. And uh, it's a piece of cake. Because, <laughs> again, in all bold, 100%, none of that 96% legal Windows 10 flashing for Pies. No. Hundred <laughs> percent, and it uses words like "in theory." <laughs> We're dealing with Windows. In theory, is probably a bold claim. I don't know <laughs> in the I, right context. It's, it's uh, getting Windows on a Pi. Anything apparently is like a super not straightforward task. I'm going to say that, it, but you kind of need a Pi Four for this because you need the four gigajoules RAM, which is another thing. A uh, mm. couple of things you got to keep in mind, like uh, uh, the Wi-Fi networking stuff's not going to work. But then again, it's Windows. Look at that as a security feature. And um, yeah, <laughs> also, you won't be able to de-bloat the OS because is that something you do in Windows? I don't know. Like they say that in the um, on the GitHub pages. It's like, oh, of course, yes, you do the de-bloating. Is that something people do in Windows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or install NT 4.0 <laughs> uh, it, it's been a thing at least since I'm aware of people actively modding Windows installs to remove a bunch of like the stuff that no one uses and just make it like oh Windows uh, what was the one I downloaded Windows XP Gamer Edition which I'm pretty sure was yeah. loaded with malware mm. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Windows XP VLC Edition <laughs> Yes. There's that one that took out <laughs> Windows Media Player. <laughs> but yeah, it is uh, in, uh, right at the top of the thing. They have a, a link to a complicated tutorial. Yeah. That's the URL. And mm -hmm. uh, the I was reading through that. Well, and I think like, what's oh. going on right now, like further we get down here, this is, this is you start reading down here if um, <laughs> this kind of dies in a fire. <laughs> yeah. The, the idea is to flash the card, then the card's going to take care of that yes. and get the image. And, but if there's a oopsie, but I wouldn't recommend it, doing This is I, Windows. You have to account for yeah. the whoopsies because they okay. will happen. Here's a real one. Here's a real one, though. Or the um, warsies. <laughs> this is a call. Out, outside of entertainment purposes for a live stream, why would you put Windows on a buy? And for what reason? Like what would even you're going to build everything from there's is there is it repos for like did some there's the Windows Store yes and some of the applications if they were done properly with the universal Windows app um like Microsoft was trying to push for a while there if they are that technically they should run and I have to put yeah. that technically there because this is Windows and nothing is guaranteed the <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, like reading the complicated tutorial, I'm looking at that and I'm going, oh, uh, when the um, when the Gabe gear comes out and people start installing Windows on that thing, I am going to get myself such a big bag of popcorn. I don't even like popcorn yeah. and I'm going to eat them at that particular instance, which apparently now is going to be two months later because Valve pushed that back. But Pedro, Lissad. if I can get <laughs> Windows 10 or Windows 11 installed on my Raspberry Pi 4, that means I can probably get WSL loaded. And now WSL has a GUI. That, yes. So I can yes. run my GUI application. You can install it from the Windows Software Center. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so at this point, we're running <laughs> Windows on a Raspberry Pi. This is yes. the fantasy land that we're currently yeah. in. Uh -huh. uh, Windows on a Raspberry Pi, yep. which we download WSL2. Correct. Uh, and we load a GUI 
on WSL too. So at that point, what's stopping us Baby, from? Oh, I'm trying know. to make Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> and we blush. can run an arm emulator on top of that with QMU. <laughs> yeah, we, we can run any VM <laughs> software at that point. Yep. <laughs> Pi Inception. <laughs> Pi Inception, man. Uh, there be dragons. The idea of that is tempting but i don't hate myself that much and the one raspberry pi 4 i have is a very good gaming machine so i'm going to leave it at that and uh here you go <laughs> why don't you use it to power your boy stream DMG. deck like a normal person come on <laughs> hey if you want to tell I us about a stream deck <laughs> if you want to tell us about your pie Durkins, how can you do that mm-hmm <laughs> can do that very very easily uh you can shout at us on the interwebs many ways to do that but nope. the best way guaranteed that we will see what you we're want to say Pedro, to- we we're vintage we have a web zone look at that we do <laughs> we have a website you go to legsgamecast.com and there's a contact button and if you click the contact button there's a form uh there's also a captcha but it happens in the background don't worry about it uh the all you gotta worry about is the caveats at the top don't include links. If you have stuff, uh, there's a, one of the warnings has a, an email address that you can send us stuff to. But if you just want to say hello, ask a question, shout in our general directions, provide some constructive feedback, you can do that. Just pick LWDW, fill out the form, and it'll show up right here on this very slot. No one took us up this week. Bring it. No. No, bring it. I, I want to see if we can get something good, something worthwhile. <laughs> yeah. I probably said something incendiary during this particular episode. Oh, we'll get it. As we'll I'm we'll, to we'll do. get it um, for this week. I guarantee. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> we were talking about that on Saturday. Yeah, we do Linux Gamecast weekly. Yeah. I'm like, it's <laughs> ebb and flow sometimes with the feedback. I'm like, oh boy, here it comes. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it. We got to get out of here. This has been a long show, but Aww. thanks for showing up. We're going to roll some credits and uh, yeah, do that thing. Oh, thank you all for joining us in chat. We had quite the motley crew today in chat. It's awesome. And I want to thank uh, Frosty the Claw Man. He the increased his pledge. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to the Raiders too. I'm glad you, you noticed that, uh, Pedro. And um, yeah, so Frosty the Claw Man increased his pledge on uh, our Patreon. So thank you so much, Frosty. <laughs> and thank you, Steve Husband. Yeah, no. Linux uh, Ganuru, a, a rate of 300 people, bacon. which was kind of crazy. I didn't know Steve you could count that high. I know. <laughs> You've been lying to what me this whole time, man. <laughs> PLNRND. We got Altimore, Artharin. Kotaku. Hey everyone, we'll see you next week. Thanks for showing up. Kotaku is the website. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Love shock. I meant. <laughs> yeah. Not that. Not the website. <laughs> Love you all. <laughs>